is the combination of conspiracy of leadership that led us to where we are today. Virtually every sector of the economy has collapsed. Even though they inherited a collapse system. But they apply for the job from the same party. And there was no creativity in times of rejiggling the economy, rejiggling the policy and creating deterrence. They are aware that the country had been looted out before taking over. We never had it in the history of Nigeria, the profiteering and racketeering of the Central Bank of Nigeria, NNPC, the biggest cartel ever in the history of Nigeria recorded, that grounded the economy. CBN have no power to hijack uh, public uh, individuals' account. The change of the currency, the redesign of the currency, crippled the economy of Nigeria to its knees, up to the community level. People cannot bring out their chicken to sell it, nobody to buy it. People lost their memory. What happened? What was the foundation of where we are today? Those that specialize in farming are no longer farming. Under two circumstances. One, the insecurity scared them from going to their farms. Two, the cost of fertilizer is beyond their purchasing power. Now, how do you compare the two? You remove subsidy on petroleum. You do not put subsidy on fertilizer that produces food for, for the entire country. Not too long ago, this same country fit almost the entire West African coast. When Medugri was in peace, you see hundreds of trailers supplying food to West African coast from uh, Benin, I mean, uh, all the borders, Ogun, uh, Benin Republic, and what have you. Hundreds of trailers taking food to West African coast. We have a population of about 250 million, which is a plus for any nation. But when you cannot feed the population, the population turns against the country. You have graduates. Their parents sold their property to send them to school. You did not provide any hope for them, no job for them. The private sector is dead. People are running out. Is it not a man-made disaster? It's a man-made disaster. It's a policy, it's a fair policy issue that have no human face. Less than 1% of 1% of Nigerians are looting and milking the country out, and they are known. Some of us that have worked with government, we knew clearly it is practically impossible for someone to steal one naira in government establishment without the connivance of the financial sector of that particular ministry or agency or parastatal. It's not possible. It's zero percent possibility. Everything is traceable. Because the structure of the system of government, there is no warehouse where free money is being kept for anybody to pick. Now, the entire health sector is dead. Our, our, our best medical personnel have left the country. Yesterday, somebody came from Kefi. He was telling me Federal Medical Center in Kefi. They have no doctors right now. They have all booted out of the country. Go and check the statistics. The doctors that left Lagos, left Kano, even University of Ibadan, the premium university. My national secretary, who usually go there for me, told me that most of the doctors have left. On what ground? Was it that Nigeria is so wretched? We cannot improve the welfare of the medical doctors. We cannot improve the welfare of the security agencies that are dying for the country to save the country. They don't have gadget to operate. They don't have tracking system. People will be kidnapped ram randomly. I see we are just a banana republic. There's no rules or regulations. And yet some of these strategies are the best in the world. So our problems are entirely a man-made disaster problem. So it's easy to fix it because it's a man-made issue. It's not a natural disaster. What the leadership needs to understand is to go back and have a very fundamental retreat. Having a meeting with the governors, making proposals will not solve the problem because they are part of the problem. The government injected billions of palliatives into the states. 
you should go and find out how many people benefited from that palliative. Some of them want measure of rice. The most privileged ones are the ones that got one bag of rice who are, are close to the government. How many billions were spent? If they spend that two, two billion they gave to states, if they spend it in training plumbers in Nigeria, in training electricians in Nigeria, in training people in fashion industries and buying sewing machine and designing machine, in training messes, in training uh, welders, do you know how many millions will take off the streets? How many millions? Our budget have never been people-oriented budget. It's an elitist based budget. It's a conduit of taking the whole funds after being budgeted and approved. It has nothing to do with the ordinary people. And that is why you cannot find government, even in the state where you have a governor, you hardly find a government. You see lawlessness. You can't find government in local government. You can't find government in communities. Even a councillor that was elected as a councillor feel too important to pick a call from his own community. Not to talk of a local government chairman. To pick a call of an ordinary people who can give him unfiltered, undiluted intelligence. Not to talk of a commissioner and above all a governor to pick a call of somebody from the village to give him undiluted information so that he can nip it before it gets out of hand. There is no way you can divorce governors from this massive level of poverty, insecurity in Nigeria. It's not possible. They are integral part of it. They are completely integral part of it. So it's a multifaceted situation that we are in and it require collectiveness from both the executive, the legislative, the judiciary, the traditional rulers, the religious scholars, the, the journalists, the worst of all, the politicians, to admit that they created this anarchy. It's the political class that created this anarchy that we are in today. So you very believe Nigeria is in an anarchy situation? We are. The chief of army staff said we are in a state of war. He said it in the National Assembly. The spokesman of the army said that we are in a state of war. Nigeria is in a war. So it means it's worse than anarchy. So that is a situation, it's a practical situation that we are in. I'm happy they have admitted. Could I not also, if the, the military have come up to say that Nigeria is in a state of war, doesn't that give rise to one of the you know, bills that has been, that has been pushed at the National Assembly by... Um, um, by Senator Ned Wuko, where he asked that Nigerians should be allowed to bear arms. Have we gotten to that point where Nigerians should begin to bear arms? I think that, 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 that suggestion is a lawless suggestion. If the current armed forces, security, other paramilitary establishment that we have cannot contain the genesis of this crisis that have escalated, the Boko Haram that was isolated, which are metamorphosized, metamorphosized into different facets of non-state actors challenging the state of Nigeria. Look at the quantum of money that was budgeted for hardware and software for our military and paramilitary institutions. What are the implementation stages? Now, at the stage that we are, I don't know any state where there was no deployment of military. So the military is overstretched. And then the Nigerian police force has been decimated for a very long time. I don't know any administration, apart from Shagare administration, that have invested in the Nigerian police in terms of mobility, equipment, training, retraining, their uniforms. They buy their uniform, they buy their barrette, they buy their boots, they buy their uniform uh, themselves. And you expect them to go and die for you. What is the allowance? What is the salary of the police and the army? These young army officers that are dying in the field, how much is their allowance and their salaries? And then one individual in Nigeria is stealing trillions of naira. And there was no deterrence on him. So the, the lack of patriotism was embedded deliberately by those who feel that nothing will happen. The psyche of people, the leaders, is that, look, nothing will happen. 
but something is happening. People are revolting. The young people on the street that cannot feed themselves are revolting. They are sending a very clear message. Countries that goes to war goes to war on three categories. A nation that cannot protect the citizens is vulnerable to war. A nation that cannot feed the citizens is vulnerable to war. A nation that do not embark on massive food production is very likely to go to war. Look at Ukraine before the war. How many countries is Ukraine feeding? How many farms did the federal government have right now? Are they farming because of emergency like this to release food? What's stuff from the federal government? You have Ministry of Agriculture only existing in Abuja. What is the Ministry of Agriculture doing in Abuja? Why can't you decentralize it into the six zones and go into farmers in the six zones to produce massive food? So that's why it's a man-made issue. It's completely avoidable. Go into the Ministry of Agriculture, the budget, year in, year out. What have they done with, with that budget? It's a massive level of insincerity. The entire package is, look, let me loot as much as possible. The civil servants, the executive, are the champions of corruption in Nigeria. If we put corruption in the executive arm of the government, Nigeria will be categorized as a corruption-free nation. There's no nation that is 100% free of corruption. What you need is a percentage that can give you the latitude to run the system. That's what you need. We are below the percentage. Officials of government, civil servants that have taken an out of office are the ones taking the money out of the country. If, if they still are invested in the country, it's even much better. How many Nigerians that have access to public funds invested it in Nigeria? Maybe the lack of Aliko Dangote, maybe um, Lumelu and so on, and others that are reinvesting it for the citizens to benefit from it. If you look at the, the refinery, one of the biggest in the world today, no matter where the money comes from, it was invested in the country. Thousands of people have been employed. You better have an administrator or a governor that can work 60% and maybe still 40% than to have a governor that will steal 90% and work 10%. Every country has their own challenges in terms of corruption, in terms of stability, in terms of economic policy. We are yet to define our economic policy. Comprehensively, we don't have, know even what it is. What is the exchange rate today officially? 1,516 officially as of today. What is it in the black market? If you check it, 1,630. And those that are going to import the goods, are they going to use the Nigerian Naira to import goods? How do you expect the cost of things to go down? And this is a country that our major source of export is crude oil. We refuse to embrace BRICS so that we can trade with the Nigerian Naira. So the Nigerian currency would be in demand. Nigeria had the opportunity to lead BRICS. We played the smart one. We smarted ourselves out of it. South Africa took it. Saudi Arabia is in BRICS. You buy with their money. United Arab that Dubai is in BRICS. The, the largest commercial networks of the world are in BRICS right now. You trade with Chinese money. You trade with uh, uh, Russia money. You trade with Brazil money. The dynamics of the economy of the world have shifted. But we float our currency. And nothing is exchanged. Our currency was just float. One credit goes to buy, he refused to flood the Nara. So how do you define a situation where you have over 250 million people? You cannot feed them. You cannot secure them. You can't create jobs for them. What else do you expect? Our, our, our almost last percentage of our youth have gone into drugs. Our young girls, brilliant, have gone into nasty things. 
prostitution and other things, not by choice, but by circumstances of trying to feed themselves, help their family, they sold their property to send them to school. 